Hey guys, Andy back here from Mediocre Hobbies bringing you another painting tutorial. This time it's on the brand new Tau character that was released, Dark Strider. Um, so this is a brand new miniature product for Games Workshop. I'm going to show you guys how to paint them on the look quickly, easily, effectively using contrast and a few selected layers. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. Okay, so here is the model as it stands. I have constructed it. Um, I have left off the wall section at the back so it's easier to paint. I will glue that on at the end when I'm basing the miniature. Um, and then I have given the model a coat of Chaos Black Spray and then a Zenithal Highlight of Grey Seer. We're now going to move over to Agoros Dunes Contrast and that's going to be the first coat on all of our armor panels. So the big beautiful Tau armor across the chest, all the little panels on its arm and knees and the backpack. There's also some details on the gun as well which are going to hit with the Agoros Dunes and if you're not sure which parts exactly um, refer back to the picture you got with it or check out the 360 on the Games Workshop website. That's what I did. We're now going to move over to Wildwood Contrast. This is a really dark rich brown and we're going to use this for all of the fatigues. So the trousers that he wears, um, it goes under the armor on top half as well so behind his arms. You just want to make sure to uh, take your time and not hit any of the Agros dunes with this coat. Um, also don't make the mistake that thinking that his pants go all the way down to his feet or his hooves. Um, he's wearing these boots that go up to about his knee so the Wildwood should stop just under the knee. So this is the Wildwood applied. Already the colour is starting to get blocked in nicely. We're going to move over to Space Wolves Grey and I use this contrast as a base coat for the Tau skin. So that really nice uh, bluey grey skin colour. Um, Space Wolf Grey is a perfect way to start that off. So just load up your brush and uh, make sure especially around the face that it's settling into all the nice recesses, the face, the mouth, the tau, forehead, slit thing. Um, you want that all really nicely defined with the contrast so when it comes to the layering stage later on it's super easy to do. I'm not usually one for helmetless models, I just prefer everyone who's in combat to be armoured. Um, but um, painting skin has grown on me over the last while, so maybe you might see a few more of them on the channel. So next it's Black Templar. There's a few bits and pieces that are going to go black, mostly it's the boots. The rest of the detail on the gun that isn't Agoras Dunes will go black. And then the little spy drones that he has uh, with him. Apart from the smooth panels on top, the rest of them are going to be Black Templars. And it's just surprising how quickly you can get a miniature base coated with contrast. Moving over to Flesh Tears Red. Um, this is for the smooth armor panels on top of the stealth spy drones. I should really have looked up the name of those before I started recording, I do apologize. If anybody knows the name of these specific drones, please feel free to drop them in the comments below. <clears throat> At this point they kind of look like Pokeballs, I was starting to get worried. They have them more as a kind of a rich crimson, but I wanted to go for a little bit more of a red. Um, and I will shift their hue with the layering stage later on. So there's all of the red parts done. And now it's time for the Seraph and Sepia stage. We'll apply a Seraph and Sepia all over the model um, just to shade down everything and to pull all the different tones together. Uh, meaning that when we move back to the layering stage, all the shadows will match each other um, and all the bright colors will basically get built up from there. Um, and it add, acts for a really nice, uh, smooth, natural tone across the entire miniature. Um, so yeah. Once you've applied the shade, and we just sit back and wait for that to dry. And while that's drying... I want to start off by thanking you guys for watching the video. I hope you're getting something out of that. Whether it be education, motivation or entertainment, as long as doing one of those things, then I'm happy. If you guys are enjoying the video, I'd appreciate it if you gave it a like. And maybe consider subscribing to the channel. And um, Each and every one of you guys who subscribe really helps me out. And if you guys see real value in what I do and want to help out with me making more videos, then there's links to my Patreon below. I would love to have you guys as the newest member of the community. Thank you very much for listening. Let's get back to painting. Okay, now that we've taken the time for that shade to dry, we are left with a model that looks like this. And we are now going to move over to the tail. Tay? 
towel light ochre paint and start layering up all those armor panels. This is the most finicky and time consuming part of the entire painting process, but just take your time, make sure you get nice smooth coats, two thin layers if you need to, and just layer up those armor panels. Doing this will make all the difference to a nice crisp miniature at the end um, and really help you out with the overall aesthetic of the miniature. Some parts of this might be a little bit hard to reach. That's one of the main reasons we left the wall off the back of the base. Um, and like with fire warriors and stuff, it's a slightly easier process because they've got the big domed helmets, which are easy enough to get to. Whereas with this guy, he's got that whole comms gear going all around the side of his head that you need to be careful with and all of the different panels on the gun. Also, you need to take your time and make sure that um, it's nice and crisp looking on those parts. Try not to hit any of the black details. And there we have it, nice crisp tau armor. Those are the bits on the rifle that I was talking about. As you can see, you don't wanna hit any of those black parts. So we're now gonna move over to the Rhinox hide and we're gonna layer up any bits that we did wild wood in the previous stage. So the his fatigues underneath the armor panel. So his pants on these uh, arms and elbows underneath his uh, chest armor. Should all get a quick, nice, clean layering job of a Rhinox hide. The more painting I did on this guy, the more I think he's an absolutely stunning figure. Makes me want to run an entire army with uh, Pathfinders. The reconnaissance force of a tower army, maybe. I hope this guy is the leader. Being super careful not to hit the boots or uh, any of that nice, clean, pristine uh, ochre armor. Okay, and with the cloth looking nice and sharp, it is time to move over to the skin on this guy and add some nice detail to that. We're gonna use the layer paint Rush Gray and we're gonna be doing some careful highlights on the face um, just to grab all of that really nice detail. Obviously, this is one of the most modern sculpts of Tau faces, so the detail is super crisp on it, really pronounced, so it's actually quite an easy thing to layer up. You're not kind of guessing where forehead muscle and cheekbones are on this so it's actually quite an easy process um, to layer it up so just picking all the raised parts of the face adding a touch of color to it with the rust gray um, and then moving on to the hands and then the hooves of the tail remembering that for some strange reason tail have hooves this was a, a real pleasure to paint this face and uh I intend fully to have some more unhelmeted Tau in my army moving forward. I have yet to paint up the Shadow Sun for my army. I had always 100% intended to give her her helmet, but now I am not so sure. And then in around the hands, being super careful. I want to leave that dark color in all of the, in between the fingers and in the palm. Just want to layer up the tips of the fingers and in on the tops of the palms. This model is really starting to come together. I say we're in the home stretch now. So I need a few bits of extra color that need to be applied and the model is going to be looking slick. And of course a model like this deserves a beautiful base. So I'll be getting to that at some point soon. And I'm really looking forward to it. So we're going to move on to one of my new favorite paints, which is Corvus Black. And I'm going to layer up all of the black parts on this miniature. Um, it's one of my new favorites because it does a great job at being the black in a project. But also it's not just a flat black. It's got that nice tint of gray to it. So it's great for layering up these colors. But still keeping that really dark aesthetic. This is the bit you need to be super careful about again. Um, obviously his gun is one of the main focus points of the miniature when somebody picks this model up off the table to have a look at it or crouches down to have a look at it in the middle of a game. The gun is one of the, one of the standout parts. So making the lines as crisp as possible on this 
will make all the difference. Super crisp, super nice. Now obviously just follow the model around with all of the other parts that you added the contrast black to and uh, layer those up with the same Corvus black paint. Okay, now we're gonna move on and layer up the uh, tops of the drones, that smooth carapace on them. We're gonna be using the Screamer pink base paint. It's kind of like a whiny pink color. And this will hopefully make these drones look a little bit less like Pokeballs and more like some sort of infiltration stealth scout drones. I do like the idea of Tao having these little pocket drones now. Uh, it took me a while to realize that one of the ones on his belt on the back was actually one of these drones all folded up. Kind of wish we'd got little ones to put on extra braces so we can literally deploy them from himself and then they fly around and do their own thing. That would have been super cool. Moving over to Mephist on red now. He just has all these red ribbons going through his hair braid. So gonna hit those with a simple coat of Mephist on red. And then he has a, a ribbon coming off his bonding knife on the back. We're also gonna layer up that cloth with the Mephist on red. And I also decided to do the lens targeter over his left eye with the same color as well. Just a nice way of adding a touch of extra color to three or four points in the miniature. And with the last few bits of layering done, I moved on to basing the miniature. I used the same Martian scheme I used for my current Tau project. And then I used some dirty gray colors on the concrete and cobblestone parts. Um, selective dry brushing on the basing period to uh, blend those rocks and stuff in. And with that, I have this fantastic miniature in my collection. I'd say it took no longer than maybe two hours of painting time to have it done. I am super pleased with the result Thank you guys very much for sticking around till the end of the video. And now we have the grand reveal.